Welcome to another video. In this video, we will learn about five different kinds of local optimizations. Local optimizations refers to the optimizations that are confined within the basic block of a three address code or of an intermediate representation. In the last video, we have learned how to create basic blocks and control flow graph of an intermediate representation. Please check out the last video before continuing with this video. So in this video, we will learn about these five different kinds of local optimizations. We will learn about constant folding, arithmetic simplification, copy propagation, constant propagation, and finally, common sub-expression elimination. Let's start with constant folding. In constant folding, if we have a line of code that has constants, then we do the computation during compile time so that we don't have to do those computation at runtime and our code run faster, it takes less space and it consumes less RAM. For example, if I have a line of code x equals to 3 times 5, then I transform this line of code by computing values at compile time and writing x equals to 50. Now I don't have to compute those values at runtime and my code will run faster. Similarly, if I have code x equals to abc plus xyz. So we have to concatenate these two strings. Instead of leaving that concatenation at runtime, we will do that at compile time and transform this equation to x equals to abc xyz. Similarly, if I have a branch instruction, if 3 is greater than 0, go to L. We know that this condition is true at compile time. So instead of writing a conditional branch instruction, we can write an unconditional branch instruction transforming this code to go to L and this instruction will run faster as compared to this instruction at runtime. Finally, if I have an, a conditional branch instructions where my condition is always false, then I can simply delete that instruction from my code. So that's are some examples of constant folding. Now let's learn about arithmetic simplification. And if I have a line of code that have an equation and that equation can be simplified, then instead of waiting to simplify that equation at runtime, we simplify that equation at compile time. So let's do some examples of arithmetic simplification optimization if I have a line of code x equals to y raised to the power of 60 usually no assembly language has an instruction that can effectively compute power of a number so we transform this equation to more assembly friendly line of code by writing x equals to y left shift four times. Each left shift doubles the number. So if I left shift four times, it is same as powering y by 16. Similarly, if I have an equation y equals to 
sorry, x equals to uh, y minus minus z. Then I simplify this equation to x equals to y plus z. You can think about many other such examples where you can simplify an equation at compile time and we should do all the simplification at compile time instead of run time so that our code can run faster. The next two optimizations are related to each other. They are basically almost the same. In one, we propagate a register or a variable. In the next, we propagate a constant. So now let's learn about copy slash constant propagation. If I have an equation, say x equals to y and followed by another line of code which is z equals to x plus t. Then instead of using x here, I will use y directly. So everywhere where I am using x, I will replace it with y. So these equations will transform to x equals to y followed by z equals to y plus t. The advantage is that maybe later on this equation become redundant or useless and I can remove it. Similarly, if I have a constant here, like I have x is equals to 5 followed by an equation z is equals to x plus t, then I should propagate that constant. Here I was propagating a register or a variable and here I am propagating a constant. So my optimized code will be that x is equals to 5 as it is for the time being until the dead code removal can remove it later on and then I will get z equals to 5 plus t. The last optimization that we will learn in this video is common sub-expression elimination. quite a long name, but very useful optimization. So if I have a variable x that takes a value, say y plus z, and then that variable never takes another value, that means it is it never appears on the left hand side of an equation, it always appears on the right hand side of equations and afterwards we have another variable say f equals to y plus z and because we know that the value of x here and f here is same because x is assigned a value only once we call this by the way single assignment form where a variable appears on the left hand side only once. So x appears on the left hand side only once and afterwards f appears on the left hand side and they have the same expressions on the right hand side. Then I can replace this line of code by f equals to x instead of f equals to y plus z. But this is possible only if we have single assignment form. That means variables are on the left hand side of equation only once. If a same variable can be on the left hand side of equation multiple times, let's say I have here once again x equals to uh, j, 
then I cannot replace f equals to x here. This is not a single assignment form anymore. But when I have a single assignment form, that means x can only appear once on the left hand side, then I can easily replace the common sub expression on the right hand side of equation by the variable name. Although we have learned this optimization, but we must practice because only by a practice we can learn it really good. So I will clear the board, write an example, and in that example we will perform all of those optimizations one by one, try to optimize our code as much as possible.